Legends say Dwayne The Rock Johnson is the greatest actor to ever walk the face of the earth. And by legends, I mean Dwayne The Rock Johnson. He, he actually just recently compared the viewing of Red One to Oppenheimer in theaters. Now, I saw Oppenheimer in theaters and I saw Red One. And I have to say, disingenuous is a generous statement for what he had said, because those are two vastly different films in terms of both style, substance, and quality on the big screen. So now I don't, I don't think that that's a fair assessment. But you know what is fair? Kim being one of the number one stars in Hollywood right now, that's true. He, he is one of the most bankable stars currently working and has been for the last almost decade. One of the highest paid actors averaging around $20 million. I think that's pretty insane. And I'm not so sure he's worth it anymore. Here's the deal. Red One, I found to be pretty, pretty bad. Not terrible. It's watchable. It's a Christmas movie. And so I guess, therefore, it's fine. <laughs> Christmas movies do not have the highest bar. Although I do think Christmas Vacation, Home Alone 1 and 2. And I could, yeah, you could maybe say Grumpy Old Men and Grumpy Old Men have a Christmas element to them. They're up there. Those are some of the greatest movies ever, in my humblest of, of opinion. I think Home Alone 2 is superior to the first, but I'm getting off track. My point is, Red 1, not doing well at the box office, even if it is an okay film for some people. I, and I don't knock anybody for enjoying it. Listen, you put down your hard-earned cash, you want to see Christmas get saved by a giant monster of a man and the dude that used to play Captain America you're gonna get your money's worth for two hours. You know who's not getting their money's worth? The studio that put this film out, which is interesting because it's Dwayne The Rock Johnson's studio. And it's also doubly interesting that he made over doubly the amount of cash for this one. The last several movies have seen him making around 20 mil. Mil short for million, of course, with uh, Jumanji 2 seeing a couple million bump. You got a raise because the first Jumanji, <laughs> the first Jumanji, <laughs> I'm old enough to remember when it was pretending to be Jumanji 2. That's right. Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle is a sequel to the uh, old 90s classic. So Jumanji 3, he got a bump in pay. And uh, yeah, I think he was making like 22, 23 million. You know what? I have a doc up for document that says what he made on some of these movies. Did I get rid of the doc short for document? Yeah, I did. Of course I did. Oh no, here it is. Uh, Jumanji, the next level, he made $23.5 million. The first one he made, uh, I, I guess I don't know. Jungle Cruise, not to be confused with Jumanji. They're, they're two totally different films, believe it or not. In Jungle Cruise, he made $22 million. Red Notice, not to be confused with Red One. He also made around $23 million. You're getting the pattern here. Black Adam, $22.5 million. So it just makes sense that he would make $50 million for Red One. $50 million. Are you out of your fucking mind? What? The Red One made around $33 million opening weekend box office of a $250 million budget. This movie's not going to come close to making what it needs to to be successful. I've said this time and time again. Other people have spit this shit out. But a movie in this day and age needs to make double its box office revenue in order to break even. You need to make double. So 250 times 2 carry the, carry the 1. Da, 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 da. It needs to make half a billion dollars. That's 500 million for those that are just as bad as math as I am. Well, I guess I'm better because I figured that out in my head. But no, it needs to make about 500 million just to, just to square things up. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot of marketing behind this movie. So it probably needs to make around 600 million to be a comfortably successful film. But The Rock already made his money from his own production studio. Now, of course, take these with take this info with a grain of salt. It's coming online, so you, you just don't know what you can trust anymore. But I checked out different sources. They're all saying the same thing, around 50 million. That's insane, especially coming off of his last couple movies, one of which was Red Notice, 
hard to even gauge the success of that film unless we go by Netflix's like the most streams sort of a situation. I don't know how they calculate success over there. The amount of subscribers that join the day it launches, the amount of people that hit play on the home screen. The one before that was Black Adam. Black Adam did not do well. Uh, the power dynamic did not change. So there was not a realignment. There was not a restructuring of the superhero DCEU nonsense. Let's take a look. I think I brought that up. I think I had that number. Black Adam. Yeah, Black Adam grossed just shy of $400 million. Some people might call that a success. Well, when you're... Budget is $260 million, not bloody likely. That's a failure on all accounts. He has had a lot of success though at the box office over the years. Both of those Jumanji movies were very financially successful and supposedly they are finally rounding that trilogy out. They're calling it a trilogy even though it's technically the fourth movie, right? We're still pretending that. But this will be Dwayne Johnson, believe it or not, his first trilogy of all time out of all the years and all the movies he's tried but if we look back on his sordid history we have the rundown which lost money was not financially successful and i still think the rundown is probably his best movie to date we have walking tall actually lost money didn't even make back its budget so he's 0 for 2 right out of the gates of course, he was part of the successful Scorpion King. Well, no, not that movie. He was part of the successful Mummy, meaning Mummy 2, where he was the Scorpion King in that awful CG render at the end of the film. That let him kind of jumpstart his career, where he would make several bombs in a row and then keep getting work for some reason because he's so charismatic. Now, don't get me wrong. I like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I have nothing. I have no beef with him. I have nothing against him. I, I think he has that charisma, that it factor, of course. He brought it with onto the big screen from the ring. I just don't know if he is a bankable star, and I don't know if he ever actually has been. So Jumanji feels like the outlier. These are two movies that very much are about, you know, he's one of the central characters. Yes, Jack Black's in there. You got other actors that are, you know, like rounding out the cast. But Dwayne is front and center. And then there are other films he's done that have been financially successful. Rampage, Skyscraper. Why do I know these things? That's almost just as depressing. That's almost just as depressing as knowing that he made $50 million for a Christmas film. I mean, how, holy shit. He made $50 million to pretend to save Santa Claus. Let that sink in, folks, while you're working your nine to five, busting your ass off. <laughs> what, did I, what did I do with my life? What the hell was I thinking? I should have been hitting the gym 24 seven. I should have been getting into the ring, coming up with catchphrases, working on the eyebrow lift, the pop. Instead, I'm, I'm out here like a jackass, performing like a monkey for what, a few bucks a day on YouTube? That's depressing, that's really sad. But let's, I digress, let's move past it. His number one highest grossing franchise isn't even one he started or was even there halfway through, which is Fast and the Furious. He joined around what, like six or seven or eight? I don't, it's so hard to keep track of them. And yes, they were very, they're, they're always very financially profitable, but that's not his, like that's not his doing. All right, these were not his movies, and I think if you remove him from the situation, these movies still succeed, regardless. And I think that could be stated about a lot of the movies he was in. Rampage, based off of a very popular old video. Well, maybe it's not very popular, but it's a video game, a classic that everybody knows about, I would think. My kids know about it. Um, San Andreas, incredibly uh, popular movie, made a lot of money. There was supposed to be a sequel. I don't know what happened to that. But uh, yeah, very financially uh, successful. It's a disaster movie with a couple hot leads. You throw in Dwayne. I think Dwayne could have been taken out. You could have put in anyone in this role. And it would... They put John Cusack in a natural disaster film. 
John Cusack is not like an action star. I like John Cusack as an actor. I think he's a he's a very fun, pleasant person to watch on screen. But I think it just tells me that these these roles are interchangeable. They're disposable. And that's why I think maybe Dwayne, 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 maybe Dwayne Johnson's best days are behind him. And what does he have to show for it? Millions of adoring fans, sculpted physique, a bunch of houses, a bunch of bottles full of piss because he can't be bothered to get up and go to the bathroom. Millions upon millions of dollars in the bank account, hundreds of millions, billions. Like, what a sad life he's lived. I think it's time to sunset Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Or better yet, put him where he truly belongs as a badass supporting role. I think that's where... Or we just put him in movies that are a little bit less insane with the budgets. $250 $250 million, $50 million for him? Are you out of your mind? Make some smaller, like, $80 million movies. And I think you'll see a good return on investment, and then Dwayne really becomes a bankable star. But these, these are getting out of hand. And I want to know why. Is it because of his ego? Is it because he's pushing for bigger scale? and more explosions, and more marketing, and that's what's ballooning these budgets? Or is it the studio thinking, we gotta go, it's probably him. Let's be honest, it's probably him. I know there is a good amount, especially here in America, that love the guy. (laughs) I try not to go to Walmart that often, but when I did go there from time to time and veer into the electronics department, they had a dedicated section for The Rock. He had his own wall of movies. All of his hits were there. The Tooth Fairy, and, uh, you know, he... That actually brings up my last point. I forgot about his most billable films were the Disney crap he did, where they team him up with a cute little kid because you have this, like, David and Goliath thing, this giant monster of a man and this tiny, cute little kid. Hijinks and Sue. Those movies made a ton of money because they didn't cost much. And yeah, they're family films. It just works. It works. You get the dads in there because they want to see The Rock. You get the moms and the kids. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, bada penis. It's money. And on that note, (laughs) we'll end it there. Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe. Hopefully I catch you next time. Take care.